Good evening, everyone, and welcome to um, Hurricane Irene briefing number one from New York Metro Weather. Um, we have a whole lot to cover tonight. Uh, first, we'll show you the newest National Hurricane Center forecast track from 8 p.m. just a few minutes ago. Uh, maximum sustained winds 115 miles an hour, moving north northwest at 14 miles an hour, and you can see the um, forecasted path from the National Hurricane Center actually has nudged a little bit back to the east uh, with the hurricane expected to graze the Outer Banks and then head up the coast um, remaining just barely off the coast of Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey before potentially making a landfall in western Long Island and um, this is obviously a high impact track for our area. Hurricane watches have been posted um, from the Virginia beaches through Maryland up to New Jersey not in effect for the city yet or Western Long Island, um, but they most likely will be shortly. Here is a good view of Irene as the sun sets over the Atlantic. Um, hurricane Irene underwent what's called an eye wall replacement cycle. Um, the hurricane needs to replace its um, its eye wall, its strongest part of the storm. Um, so it decays it over a period of time and then rebuilds it over a new location. And that's when the storm can start to undergo rapid intensification. And that's pretty much what's forecast to happen over the next 12 hours or so. Although the storm is not going to reach Category 4 or 5 strength, it might get close to Category 4, the storm is expected to become much more well-defined. And you can see that happening. There's a new small eye coming up um, on the zoomed-in visible satellite imagery. And the storm is really strengthening. There's a very warm waters and ripe conditions. Um, and it's good timing with the eye wall replacement cycle. Here's a water vapor loop. You can see the um, the darker purples wrapping around the storm as it intensifies and the cloud tops are really starting to become more pronounced on the water vapor loop. Um, the system is just tremendous. Um, you can see the the outer bands are extending way out. They're already um, the water vapor from the outer bands are, is already on the southeast coast. The storm is still over the Bahamas. Um, here's the uh, infrared loop and here you can really see look how far back to the even to the east that the outer bands extend from this storm. Um, Irene is very large and its strengthening is becoming more dangerous. So over the last day or two we've seen the forecast models really jump to a consensus with this system. Um, there have been some shifts back and forth uh, as to the exact track of the storm um, but essentially it's coming down now to the fact that um, regardless of any slight shifts to the west or east the storm is going to have an impact on our area we take a look at one of the models. This is the the NAM model, um, the North American Mesoscale model, and we're looking at a bunch of panels here. It can all be very confusing. First thing I want you guys to look at uh, is right here. This is the surface pressure. That is a 960. I can't even read 960 something millibar low, sitting 20 miles or so off the New Jersey coast. Um, the surface winds are incredible. The 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 pressure of the storm, the, gra the gradient of pressure the, up here on the top right is a 500 millibar of vorticity. Here's the precipitation over the last three hours. Um, that's over an inch and a half of rain in the last three hours. And here's the winds just off the deck, 70 or more knots of wind at 900 millibars, which could easily mix down in any convention. This storm has the potential to be an extremely high impact storm especially along the coast. Here's another zoomed in image, 966. You can see the swath of heavy rain, the three hour rain totals of 2.21 inches. The winds are incredible wrapping around the system. Although the hurricane is not expected to be a category three or two hurricane, it could be a moderate to strong category one when it makes its way up here. This storm system is expected to gain speed. Um, it's important also to note that when these storms begin to make their northward movement, the winds will be strongest even behind the storm and on the east side of the storm. So you can see here the northwest side of the storm has the heaviest rain as the system develops more into a cyclone and on the back end of the east side some very very intense winds and these don't even account for wind gusts so these are 40 or more knots sustained winds and then the wind gusts that mix down with the 70 to 80 knot winds just above our heads is a scary scary thought. Um, this was the old model guidance. We actually got the new model guidance in. Um, this is the early evening model guidance. You can see Irene forecast to take the turn north and then north and east, riding up the New Jersey shore. And this has the potential 
to be a very dangerous storm. And it's important to remember, we talked about this yesterday, it's not time to panic, you know? It's time to act. It's time to be prepared. It's time to stock up on important things and make sure that you are ready so that if the worst case scenario does occur, which the likelihood is increasing that this will be a significant impactor for our area, you can be ready to act immediately. Um, it's important uh, that we go over real quick the, the areas that have been... Um, handed out evacuations. There are voluntary evacuations up and down the New Jersey Shore, so this is just a rough area, but the red areas have mandatory evacuations starting Friday. That's Long Beach Island, um, and Atlantic and Ocean, uh, um, Atlantic and Cape May counties have been ordered mandatory evacuations, so if you live in those areas, please contact your local officials and make sure that you follow their um, guidelines for evacuation, which is important to access the New Jersey coastal evacuation maps. Every county has a coastal evacuation route and storm surge maps. It's important. Click your county. Look at them. There's ones for New York, too. It's, it's very simple to find these maps. We'll be posting them for you. Um, and you can see they show you your evacuation routes in red, how to get out of areas that are so terribly prone to storms like this, like Long Beach Island. Look up and down Lavalette, Seaside Heights, Seaside Park. Um, all the way down to Ship Bottom and Brant Beach and Long Beach Island. These areas are surrounded by water. And when this storm comes up from the south and brings with it this incredible storm surge and heavy rain and wind battering the shore, it's going to get bad. So prepare now. It's not time to panic. It's time to act. It's time to pre be prepared for this system, which we have not seen a system like this um, in quite some time. So planning ahead, you need to know what to do if there is a power outage. You need to know what to do if there are personal injuries, how to turn off the water, gas, electricity. If you have to evacuate, know all your emergency contacts. Have food and all necessary supplies ready if the hurricane does um, make its pass in our area. So we look to one more time at the, um, at the Zero-Z models, and it's important to realize that that they're an area that would bring the storm from basically as we look at this loop just scraping the Outer Banks to just east of Ocean City Maryland to just a few miles off the New Jersey coast we mentioned it before the best winds may shift to the east side of the system with the heaviest rain to the west side of the system but that doesn't mean you can't get hurricane force wind gusts especially with such an anomalous 500 millibar map I mean these are incredible um, dynamics that are going to be in play during this storm system. So please heed the warnings. Realize that this storm could be significant. It's a very big storm. It's, it's on a very big scale and the conditions that could be dangerous could extend outwards many miles um, from the storm system. So as far as timing goes, the storm is expected to begin to impact us on Saturday um, afternoon most likely with uh, you know on and off heavy rain from the outer bands of the storm system and then Saturday night into Sunday the real effects of the system begin to be felt as the low pressure begins to move up the coast and the wind and the rain and the storm surge really increase also important to note astronomical high tides there's a new moon this weekend which is only gonna make things worse um, along the coast so hurricane watches are in effect from Ocean City Maryland northward all the way to Sandy Oak um, act now be prepared um, have all your essentials ready. If you live along the coast, have an evacuation plan. Know where you need to be. Research this and make sure you know what you're doing because although there may not be evacuations mandatory right now, if the storm continues on this path, it may become necessary um, by tomorrow. Um, and also, of course, stay with us on Facebook and Twitter. We will have the latest developments um, up to the minute. As soon as we get it, we will relay it to you. Um, we'll keep you as on top of the storm as we possibly can. Um, so, again, we're, it, it is panicking would be the wrong thing to do right now. Being prepared would be the right thing to do. So that come Saturday night or Sunday, if the storm is still on this track and it still seems like things, conditions are going to rapidly deteriorate. Deteriorate, excuse me, um, with heavy rain and wind, that you can act in the case of emergency. Um, we will have more details again on the, the evacuations, mandatory, voluntary, whatever it may be. Um, so stay with us on Facebook and Twitter at New York Metro Weather. Send us your comments, 
um, your pictures, your photos, your thoughts, um, whatever it may be, and we'll be interacting with you throughout the night. We'll also have a new one of these uh, briefing videos coming out just after midnight tonight um, with the latest updates from the evening forecast model guidance as we get it in. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be in touch very shortly.